enthalpy change. What is enthalpy? What is enthalpy change? Well, enthalpy is really just a fancy word for chemical energy. You'll be aware there are many different forms of energy, but the chemical energy, the energy in chemicals, is given the special name enthalpy. We have here a piece of wood. Does it have any energy? It doesn't look much like it. But I've only got to set fire to the wood to see it can give out a tremendous amount of heat. So there must have been the energy, there must be a huge amount of energy in the wood. And as the wood burns, it's losing energy. This is an exothermic reaction. We can represent this reaction by a simple diagram. If we think in energy terms, that the wood has a certain amount of energy. Or as we should call it, enthalpy. Now when the wood burns, it's losing this energy. Which means that once the wood has burned, there's less energy than there was at the start. The energy has been lost, the energy has come out of the wood. And if we say, for example, that the wood turns to ash, and many other substances as well, ash, etc. Then the products of this reaction have less energy than the reactants. This is an exothermic reaction. The alternative, of course, is an endothermic reaction. And in an endothermic reaction, the reactants soak up energy. Instead of giving out energy, instead of losing energy, they take on board energy so that at the end of the reaction, the products have more energy than we started with. This is an endothermic reaction. One way to convey this information is to use the symbol delta H. And delta H mainly means the change in energy between the reactants and the products. If there's a drop in energy, as in an exothermic reaction, we give it a negative symbol. If there's an increase in energy, then the delta H, the enthalpy change, is given a positive symbol. However, these diagrams are an oversimplification. Because you would see that in order to get the energy out of the wood, I first of all have to give energy into the wood. I have to supply it with energy, and only when it gets to a certain temperature does it start to catch fire. So, we very seldom go straight from reactants to product. We usually have to have a bit of an energy hurdle to overcome. So if we take this exothermic reaction, here's a more accurate representation. If we imagine this is the wood, and this is the ash, etc. Then to go from wood to ash, we first of all have to put energy in, and then the energy comes out. The energy which has to be supplied to kickstart this reaction is called the activation energy and it's given a symbol Ea. In other words, we can't get from wood to ash plus other products without first of all supplying some energy. We could come up with some imaginary values. Let's give the wood an, an energy value of say 100. Let's suppose that in order to kickstart the reaction we have to supply, let's say, 20 units of energy. So the wood has to be raised to this energy before eventually the reaction gets going. If we don't get to the top of this energy hill, we cannot get down the other side. An analogy it would be a roller coaster. The roller coaster won't work unless you get to the top of the incline, then it gets going. Let's suppose at the end of this reaction, the ash has an energy of, let's say, 50. And it may be possible to use these values to calculate the activation energy, there it is, 20, and the enthalpy change. Now the enthalpy change is fixed. You can't change an enthalpy change. It's fixed. The enthalpy change is the energy difference between the starting point and the finish point, just as back here. So in this reaction, starting at 100 and ending at 50 means there's been a drop of 50 units. This would have an enthalpy change of minus 50, negative 50. If we're looking at an endothermic reaction, of course things are the other way around. We start with our reactants. 
again, we have to kickstart the reaction, we have to put energy in to get it going, and only when we get to the top of a hill, then we can come down the other side and end up with our products. You might wonder why, why is this, why do we have to have this energy hurdle overcome? It's really because you have to break existing bonds in substances. In the wood, there are bonds which have to be ripped apart before the new reaction can get going, and it takes energy to overcome these forces. Looking at this diagram here, once again, we could come up with some hypothetical values. Let's suppose our reactants have an initial energy of 300. Let's suppose our final product has a final energy of 400. Then it's obvious that the overall energy change going from reactants to products has a difference of 100. It would be plus 100 to imply it's endothermic. We could also give an imaginary value to the energy which has to be supplied, the activation energy, to get over to the other side. Let's say, for example, this had a value of 900. Then we have to go from 300 to 900 to overcome this hurdle. We would say the activation energy for this reaction is 600 units of energy. One thing that's worth bearing in mind is that a catalyst will affect the activation energy. You might recall that when a catalyst is added to a chemical reaction, it goes much faster. And the reason is, instead of a substantial hurdle to overcome, it's a much smaller obstacle that's to be overcome. So here is a line which represents a reaction which involves a catalyst. There's much less energy required to overcome this, the, the initial reaction. Our starting point doesn't change, our finish point doesn't change, the, the enthalpy change, delta H doesn't change, all that changes is the activation energy. Instead of a, instead of a large amount of energy having to be supplied, a much smaller amount of energy is required. The same would be true here. If we added a catalyst, once again, it would lower the activation energy. But it does not change the starting point, it does not change the finish point, and therefore it does not change the enthalpy change for the reaction.